Hey, welcome to WSJ Live. I'm Clemency Burton Hill. Now, as the new year approaches, so inevitably do those waves of resolutions and self improvement plans. There may even be people out there who want to advance at work or even get a new job. Our WSJ reporters on the At Work blog have been helpfully identifying some great strategies for advancing your career in 2013. And Alison Lichter joins me in the studio now to talk through some of the top tips. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I'm glad to be here. This is a great blog, I have to say. There are some really fantastic tips here. Let's start Great. with how to look like a leader. Mm, yes, so we decided that we wanted to really look at all aspects of leadership and advancing your career. And one of them, of course, is how we present ourselves. So we looked at a 2012 study uh, put together by the Center for Talent Innovation that looks at this notion of executive presence. What goes into making someone look like they're someone who should be taken seriously? There are sort of three main qualities that this uh, survey uncovered. One is a sense of gravitas. Do you look like someone that other people People should take seriously. I just want to say it's hilarious because both you and I, I are now know, like, sitting up. Sitting up, shoulders is this, back. Is this gravitas? Yeah, this is gravitas. <laughs> and interestingly, you know, one of the things the study revealed is that for women, this sort of how to convey gravitas is slightly different than than that's than what's required for men. So yeah, sitting up straight, you know, eyes up chin up, all of that is part of that. The other thing that we wanted to talk about in our item on how to look like a leader is we wanted to talk about our workwear series, which we've been doing all year, where we've gone into offices all over New York City, 19 offices, talked to 250 people about their own office style. And we gathered some tips from different people who take office style really seriously. Everything from the most important thing in your outfit is the jacket you're wearing. Neither of us are wearing jackets, but I think we're okay. Right. Uh, and, <laughs> right. and then also, you know, adding how to add your own personal flair, a touch of color in your socks or your tie without going so overboard that you scare people away. So those kinds of tips, sort of how to present like a leader and how to add your own personal style are a big part of what we tried to do here. Now, one of the things that everyone I, I saw on their LinkedIn resumes, for example, always says that they're a creative problem solver. Right. Now, of course, problem right. solving is absolutely key, but what can we do to be more creative when right. it comes to solving problems? Yeah, the thing that I was really happy with when we worked on this item was that uh, creative problem solvers are not born, they're made. And this was a big relief to me because you, know, you sort of hope, like, we're not all Steve Jobs. Can we all get to that level of creativity? And the answer we found was yes, and they're kind of three main ways to get to becoming a more creative problem solver. First thing is you're given your task by your manager. The first thing is ask lots of questions. Ask questions of your boss. Ask questions of your peers. Gather as much information as you can about the nature of the problem you're being asked to solve. Then go away. You know, take a walk away from your desk. Go get a sandwich and wait online in a shop somewhere, and let your mind wander. This is called entering your inner world. Entering your inner world. Exactly. I like that. It sounds a little <laughs> bit kind of hippie and new age. Yeah. But there you go. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that you have to create the iPod. It just means you can come back and, and creatively have address a the problem. Of suggestions. Yeah. Let's talk about if you're leaving a company, yeah. how you can actually address some of the issues there, because it used to be with a lot of companies that you left and you were cut off. Right. Yeah. One of the things that we looked at in this sort of item is the the power of the corporate alumni group. So we think about leaving school, college, whatever, and we are connected to our alumni association, but it turns out that many companies have corporate alumni groups that you join, and it's a networking opportunity, but it keeps you very much in your field. It's a simple action that you can take, but it keeps you totally plugged in, so you know you never know where new opportunities might arise. And that's hoping, presumably, that you leave on, good a good, on, yes. on good terms, exactly. <laughs> now, I love the next one because I am the queen of the to-do list. Mm -hmm. I mean, my husband will be laughing because there are scattered around our entire apartment yeah. so many different to-do lists. And yeah. of course, do I ever finish them? Of course not. So how can we actually get through the to-do list? Right, this was a great relief to us. So we have we spoke with a, a researcher who identified a strategy for to-do lists called the if then list. So, you know, my to-do list has all kinds of things on it that could happen at any time if they happen at all. Her suggestion is, you know, attach a time to the task. So if it's Tuesday, that means by noon I will have completed this item. If right. it's three o'clock on Wednesday, that means this will have gotten done. It turns out that there's something in our brain that once we assign a number to an item, that triggers the brain to take action on that item that much more regularly. And I mean, also it's great because it's looking at specific actions rather than big generalities. Now, of course, one of the great things is if we get through our to-do list, it's yeah. going to be a big help in reducing stress levels, yeah. which is something that you've also tackled. Tell right. us about how to reduce stress. Yes, well, the big thing that I was relieved by in reducing stress is um, break time. You know, it's sort of the go and wait online idea, but 
part of the thing that this the doctor we spoke with talked about is its volume of work, velocity of work, and abuse at work. Those are the three main causes of stress that you know exist in the modern workplace. So one of the big strategies that he recommends is taking those important breaks. And for those of us that are hard driving, we take our work seriously. Um, walking away from our desk can seem like a really scary thing to do because it means like, like I'm not getting things done. But actually, our productivity goes up when we give ourselves those ten minutes to just breathe. And it's such a crazy environment if you feel like you have to have the face time all the time. You have to be very right. present, visible. Now, right. if you do make a mistake, a little office gaffe, mm -hmm. one of the things that we tend to think is that we kind of cower behind that. But actually, you're saying if you say you're sorry, own up to it and move on. Exactly. Go ahead, apologize, and then let it go. Move forward. The other thing that's important about recovering from a, a gaffe of some kind is make sure your apology fits the crime. You know, if you've done something that nobody really notices other than you and your bruised ego, it's okay to just let it go. But when you have done something that really requires an apology, be direct, be clear, and then move it along. And this can be for anyone at any level yeah. throughout the workplace. Yeah. You know, yeah. I guess a lot of you know more junior employees might be afraid of saying sorry because they don't mm -hmm. want to highlight the mistakes they've made, but right. it's great advice. Now, this is a brilliant one. The last one we're going to talk about is practice your job. This is about right. the difference between working hard and actually getting better at your job. Right. Tell us more. So the notion that we're discussing here is an idea called deliberate practice. You know, musicians practice every day for a certain amount of time. Why shouldn't we who work in you know the knowledge industry with ideas and other people, we too need to practice our work. So so one of the things that is suggested here is, again, attaching a certain amount of time to a certain set of skills that you want to improve. Say you're a salesperson and you want to increase the number of sales you make. Go ahead, block out an amount of time and do it, and do it over and over again. The one thing that our, our uh, host really highlights is it may be unpleasant, but that's how we grow. I, I like this though. Uh, one of the, the examples that you have in this one is a, a guy who's got an Excel spreadsheet right. to track how he spends every single hour of every day. That just sounds way too organized. Yeah. You're going to have to be doing all of these things and really living them. Right. Thank you so much, Alison Lichter, for joining me in the studio. And don't forget, you can see all of the top tips on the WSJ At Work blog. And there are also some amazing slideshows of people at work in their office there. So good luck to everyone who wants to advance their career in 2013. And thanks for joining us on WSJ Live. Good luck.